Great, thank you. And uh, boy, always really happy to come back to UVM, my alma mater, two times. And, uh, and, and to see so many friends and colleagues, really happy to be here, so thanks for the invitation. Um, and it's especially nice to do this, um, to return to my roots in forest science. Uh, most of my work now really is more centered in policy and, and management, um, but I have a firm belief that policy and management are best by far when they are based in and informed by science. Uh, including monitoring over the long term. So I'm really happy to be here to, to um, maybe show a few slides and tell a story that's really more about policy, but policy, uh, an emerging policy issue that is really very much in need of good, strong support uh, in science and particularly monitoring. So um, this is the, uh, the, uh, the emerging issue is forest fragmentation. And, uh, at the risk of carrying on a little bit in, in the way of background, I'll just say in 2014, Act 118 of the Vermont Legislature called on the Commissioner of Forest Parks and Recreation to deliver a report one year later on uh, the importance of forests, uh, the concept of forest fragmentation, the, uh, the current status of Vermont's forests and fragmentation and the projected trends, uh, and then asked us to outline some policy options. Uh, we did that uh, over the course of a year through the department and many colleagues at, at the agency, including especially folks from Fish and Wildlife, uh, and we, we put together a report doing that. Uh, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the report and where it's led to, and then try to make a connection to VMC and the need for kind of a call for action here. So we begin this report. Um, really just by, by talking about the, the forests of Vermont. We characterize them in a very general way. Uh, you know, how much, where, what kind. Uh, and then really what we did was focus on the values and benefits that accrue to Vermont from Vermont's forests and, and make a case that forests are absolutely critically, foundationally important for Vermont in so many different ways. Um, before launching into those, a description of those values and benefits, we, um, we try to make the point um, that forests, um, they're more than just a collection of trees and that they are far better described as a verb than a noun. Uh, forest is more about what it does, uh, interactions and processes and benefits. So we really focus on what forests do for Vermont uh, and our guests. Um, and then once establishing that, we kind of lump those values and benefits into a few broad areas. Um, of course, uh, it's important, especially when speaking with the legislature, to, uh, to kind of get their attention by pointing out that forests are the basis for a significant portion of Vermont's economy uh, in a very big way, starting with the forest products economy, the very traditional use of wood and other forest products, nearly a billion and a half dollars annually in, in economic activity in the state, employing many thousands of people, and pointing out that in, in rural Vermont, it's actually foundational. It's kind of the bedrock for rural Vermont's economy, uh, is this working landscape of, of forests with farms. Um, and the role of uh, wood manufacturing still being fairly key in providing high high paying jobs throughout the state. We also talk about the economics of scenery, tourism, outdoor recreation. Forests are the natural infrastructure for our world class outdoor recreation economy and they're certainly the scenic backdrop to our tourism economy which is really important in Vermont. So there's a significant economic pitch for the value of forests and then we continue with the no less important but sometimes less well understood and certainly not monetized values that come from forests, including uh, flood protection, water supply, clean air, um, and I think we're, this audience is largely familiar with those kinds of things, but we need to really pound away at making the connection for how forests provide these things. Services that are incredibly valuable that we would otherwise have to pay for, but we don't because forests are actually doing it for us. Um, uh, we spend a fair amount of time in one area of value, which is uh, the other native Vermonters, the, the wildlife of the state, and how important forests are in holding that together uh, for wildlife, biodiversity, and connectivity. Uh, and incidentally, we, I would make as an as a editorial comment, it, it appears to me that this is an area that we are rich in data and science and support, more so than some of these other aspects of the values of Vermont's forests. And it was fun to kind of mine that literature and try to summarize those benefits and values. Uh, that accrue from wildlife. 
Uh, we call out climate mitigation, of course, in its own separate category. Uh, forests playing such a significant role there. Uh, spend some time with that. And then our last category of forest value is to highlight the role that when you put all that together, it really actually supports the quality of life uh, in Vermont. It's kind of, um, it speaks to our brand uh, and our cultural heritage uh, and that we even make connections to human health through, uh, the, uh, through healthy forests. Then the, the report really jumps into the meat of it, to sort of describing, just trying to make sure everybody understands what we mean by fragmentation, the de defining the terms. This is the breaking of forests into ever smaller pieces, kind of in an incremental way with major impacts and function and value. Uh, and so we sort of define those terms of parcelization, fragmentation, spend some time talking about uh, the drivers, doing some analysis of, well, what causes forest change in this way, uh, land use change. Uh, and we've sort of highlighted escalating property values and property taxes, um, um, the aging demographic of the, the majority of Vermont's private lands are owned by folks 65 years and older, pointing to uh, a threshold of uh, a demographic change, of transactions that really actually threaten the, the future of Vermont's forests. And that is clearly a, a driver in the conversion of forest to non-forest. Uh, and then the exurbanization of Vermont's landscape, that is the um, development, use and conversion of forest land outpacing human population growth. It's happening at a rate that exceeds our actual population growth, and that's clearly not sustainable. Uh, and we spent some time talking about uh, how we really need to look at our, our patterns of land use and the decision making that leads to change in forests. Uh, diving into a little further, we spent some time talking about kind of how, how does it happen? Uh, specifically, uh, the mechanisms fragmentation, mostly owing, uh, deriving from linear in infrastructural development, that's roads, and power lines, and things like that, and then the radiating effects that, 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 that um, result, um, and ultimately heading towards conversion of forest in, in pieces and bits, uh, and again, breaking forests, I think, is a perfectly reasonable way of describing it because it says so much, that, and, it, and it's rendering them less functional, less valuable, uh, through the functions that they provide. We document some, uh, and this is really where I'm going to go with this, is the idea that, that qu how do we quantify it? We've had some trouble quantifying these changes. We know over the last 25 years, land use, uh, there are changes. Uh, and um, so we can show some pictures and images like this, a sim similar place over time, and showing what, what, trying to paint a picture of what we mean by fragmentation largely owing to uh, single family residential development. And then spent a fair amount of time talking about, well, what are the effects? And we did this, group them by those values, those six, five or six categories of value. And for each of those, we said, what are the effects of fragmentation? How does fragmentation negatively impact these values that we depend on forests for? And that really, they come down to two base, all, all impacts, all effects of fragmentation can be lumped into one of two categories. There's so-called edge effects. That's the effect of non-forest edge on forest and eroding the qualities of interior forest. And then the isolation effects of, of forests, uh, fragments and remnants being separated from each other and the, the problems that causes. This is where uh, some of the work of the VMC and, and others in long-term monitoring has been very helpful in pointing out the trends in, in, uh, in, and maybe making some connections to the changes in land use with changes in, in populations of animals, for example. Uh, but it also points to an area where I think we need continued work and we need to, uh, there is interest in the legislature in diving into some of this and saying, well, well, how do you really, is this really connected to the land use changes that you're seeing? So documenting land use change, documenting the impacts in a more rigorous, uh, long-term monitoring kind of way would be very helpful to, for us to continue here. Um, we finish with uh, this list of policy options, a, quite a long list that are summarized into five broad categories, uh, kind of holding the large blocks together that, that really do so much for us. Uh, then a, a third category of landowner incentives, trying to, uh, you know, what can we do to, to incentivize landowners to keep forest forest? That's really what, what it's about. Uh, uh, we make some recommendations about uh, really what we call land use planning and regulatory approaches to land use decision making. Put simply, there is no lens. There is no lens in any land use regulatory mechanisms in the state, whether it's local zoning, or Act 250, Section 248 proceedings that, that values forests. There are many other criteria, not forests. Certainly not forest blocks, healthy forests, and connectivity. It's not included. We're suggesting it's time to include forests, given the values they provide, as a lens in land use decision making. And there's a whole lot there, and we are gonna really need some support 
um, to, make, uh, to overcome a lack of political appetite to make those kind of changes. Here again, a call for action from folks uh, like you all and the role of the VMC. Uh, and then the last one is to, somewhat counterintuitive for many, but the idea that we're going to save forests and all they do for us by cutting some trees. Not willy-nilly, not just whatever, but in a careful, close, intelligent manner. So support for forestry and the forest economy of Vermont is a key element in our strategies for keeping forests forest. And so we want to emphasize that. We know a lot about good silviculture in this state. We have many good foresters with an ecological basis in silviculture. Um, none of that matters if we don't have a marketplace. And that marketplace is, is, is in terrible trouble right now. Globalization and all kinds of factors, well beyond our control actually here in Vermont. But nonetheless, we need to pay attention to Vermont's forest economy because without that marketplace, a viable, robust forest marketplace, none of this activity that supports uh, healthy forests and, and habitat, outdoor recreation, scenery, et cetera, can happen without that marketplace. So we, we put some, in, uh, some ideas in there uh, in this broad array of policy options. Uh, the legislature listened. Uh, this report was very well received. Uh, and um, they sort of called our bluff a little bit and said, OK, Commissioner, uh, Act 61 of 2015 says the commissioner will return uh, this coming January with a set of specific recommendations. Uh, with stakeholder engagement throughout the summer and fall, we've been building a set of specific recommendations to the legislature on what to do to support forest integrity and thwart forest fragmentation. Uh, so we're working on that now. And uh, I guess the last thing I'm going to I'll leave you with is a, more of a, of, is a call for action, which is that you know we tried to characterize, uh, we, we've got lots of numbers about uh, real estate transactions and parcel size and parcel number. But really, how can we quantify in, a, in an impactful way and, and explain to folks what's happening out there? 11,000 acres of forest land lost every year. For the first time in over a century, Vermont's actually losing forest land. Um, we need to tighten those kinds of numbers up. Uh, and we need really better metrics. Uh, and so one area would be that we've done this. We have this wonderful forest habitat block analysis conducted by Fish and Wildlife Department. Um, but it's at the 30 meter um, pixel uh, scale. And we need, it doesn't capture much of the development that we're seeing that is, that is troublesome. So we need, we need to do that. We need to focus and find better metrics there uh, to build on this work of the Habitat, habitat Black, Block Max for long-term um, uh, tracking of, of land use change in forests. I guess I just want to say, by way of conclusion, that just to be clear, because I, I, I do work in a political context, and I think it's really important to understand that we're not saying close the borders and stop all human development. That's just not, that's not wise, it's not practical, it's not going to happen. What we're saying is, again, let's value forests. And ask yourselves, if you buy this idea that forests are incredibly important, our unique competitive advantage in Vermont, in Vermont providing um, values and benefits that we cannot outsource, okay? This is our unique competitive advantage. If you buy that, then ask yourself, do we have the legal institutional uh, um, frameworks in place to, to ensure that those values will continue? And I've not met anyone in the last eight months traveling the state talking about that who said, yeah, I'm confident that we have the systems in place to keep this going. Because we are accidental forest owners in many ways. And it's time to change that. So, uh, and I, I truly believe having been through this so much with legislators and policy leaders that we need good data. And we need long-term trends. Uh, that's what forest health is about. So I want to thank you all for the work you've done over 25 years, because it's been helpful. And I want to make a little call for action here to continue uh, to collaborate and really think about how we can tell this story of the role and uh, importance of Vermont's forests and help guide policy development that would ensure those values continue. Thank you.